Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you about how to use a ducker on the bass guitar with a side chain to the kick to make the kick have a little bit more impact in your mix. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, the bass guitar and the kick drum, they share the same frequency spectrum in the low end. So if you have a bass guitar and a kick that are playing at the same time, those are going to be interacting with each other in the subwoofers. So if you push that bass guitar loud enough, you'll actually lessen the impact of your kick or if you push your kick too much, then you're going to lessen the impact of your bass guitar. But there is a little trick that we can use on the Behringer X32 or any mixers that are out there that have a ducker in their gate section. And we're going to place this ducker on the bass guitar and then use the side chain function as a ability to give a little bit more impact out of the kick. But the first thing that we need to talk about is what is a ducker? Well, a ducker is a form of a dynamics processor or a gate that will reduce or attenuate a channel after it hits a threshold on the way up. So it's in form of a compressor, but it's actually more of a gate. So. To do this, we're going to actually go to our gate section, and I have my bass guitar selected right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my mode to be duck. And so what that is going to do is I raise the threshold up here, is we will see that once this threshold goes, once this volume of this channel goes up and hits the threshold, it will reduce by our amount of our range. So we can go ahead and move this up a little bit. So I'm actually going to plan to make a reduction of about 4 dB of this. And we're going to set the attack to about 10 milliseconds. We're going to set the hold to about 50. And we're going to set the release to be about 132. And this is just going to be about the length of our kick drum of the main impact. Now, if you want a little bit more impact coming from the kick drum, you can take the attack and make it faster. The downside of that is it will have a little bit of an abrupt sound for your bass guitar. So I'm going to not activate this quite yet. And let's give a listen to this mix real quick. Now let's just pull up just the bass guitar and the drums. Okay, so here's just the kick drum of the kick out and the bass guitar. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this ducker to make it so that the kick is going to have just a little bit more impact. So I've selected my bass guitar. I have my gate section with my ducker activated. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set my key source to be from my kick drum. Now my kick drum is on channel one. So my key source, I'm going to set to channel one, which is my kick drum. And then my key filter, I'm going to go down and focus in on the fundamental frequency of my kick drum, which is about 55, 60 hertz. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this all the way down until I get to about 58. And we are going to make this slope at five. And so 
Now we can go ahead and turn on this key filter and then we are going to activate this. And I'm going to take the threshold all the way up. And so I'm gonna go ahead and play a section of this song and start adjusting the threshold to where when the kick drum is being hit, it is going to start attenuating the bass guitar. So if we take the range and we go to like 20, this is in essence what's happening. And so if we took this attack faster, but if we slow down the attack a little bit, we can still get the impact of the kick drum out without the adverse effects of having this really abrupt sound on the bass, on the bass guitar. Okay, so this is obviously too much of a ducker. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this back up a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to turn this off. Go ahead and play this again with it turned off. All right, let's go ahead and add in the rest of the band here. And to really emphasize this, I'm just going to turn this up to 20 so you guys can hear this working here. But that's obviously too much. So this is one trick that I like to use when I'm really trying to get a little bit more out of the kick drum through this mix. Now, obviously, when you have the entire band going, it's a little bit harder to hear. But if you're in a live room with some really good subwoofers up at the stage, you can really feel the impact difference with having the ducker versus not having the ducker. So this is just another tool that you can put in your belt of tool tricks that you can use on the Behringer X32. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com where I have a bunch of presets for sale on there as well as an X32 fundamentals course. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure to check that out. If you happen to have any questions or if you have an idea of a video that you want me to make on the X32 or really any mixer that's out there, please put that in the comment section down below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are gonna be helpful for you. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day.